In this video, I'm going to teach you guys how to play Awakening Hasashi in less than one hour. I noticed that playing Awakening Hasashi is actually not that difficult to play. Just lots of movement skill practices and some easy combos that I'm about to teach you in this video. And so what are we waiting for? Let's get this started. Awakening Hasashin is all about moving. First of all, we need to talk about this one is Flow Sand Warp. What this is, is that we need to press directional plus shift. So we can do like W shift, A shift, S shift, and then D shift. This skill has a short cooldown and has an iframe and super armor. And so always spam this when you guys are not sure what to do in PVPs and PVEs. After that, we're going to learn about Silent Breach. And so it says spacebar during certain skills, and then we can also add in a quick slot, but you know, let's just press spacebar and see what happens. So this is what you guys want to practice, is doing the first one, which is shift directional, and then after that, press spacebar and see what happens. Just like that. And then we're just gonna wait in the cooldown for now, and then just keep practicing this before you guys move on to the next combo. Silent Breach also has a float, and so it's really, really nice on PvP as well. Just like floating right there. After we learn that, let's learn about Paradise Surge. So what we want to do is pressing WF and see what happens if you do it right now with WF. So now what we want to do with combo wise is using the Sand Warp and then adding the Paradise Surge together. So we're going to do Directional Shift and then WF after that. Just like this. And so what we did we learn so far, let's go back again, which is Directional, Sand Warp and then Silent Breach. And then after that, we can do another Sand Warp and then add like Paradise Search. So this is what it would look like together. So we're just waiting for cooldown and then let's go. Boom, and then teleport again and then WF. And then after that, the space bar is ready again. So what we want to do is do something like that again. But there is more movement skills that I'm about to teach you guys. So let's move on to the next one once you guys get a hang of Paradise Search and Silent Breach. Keep in mind guys that Paradise Search has a spammable buttons where you guys can basically keep spamming when you guys press WF. However, keep in mind the first of the skill has invincible and super armor, but also the second one also has a super armor. For example, WF, and then it's on cooldown. But if you press WF again, look at this. We basically have another super armor. After that though, you know, there is no more super armor. So take it on your own risk spamming this skill. However, just keep that in mind that for PvP wise, you guys can basically use two abilities for that one to get a super armor for PvP. So this is what it would look like in PvP scenario. I used it once and then move direction. Boom, and the WF again, right? And it still has a super armor. So just keep that in mind, you guys can do something like that. This is my favorite one, which is Sin Splitter, guys, all right? And so what this one is, is that we want to do basically Sand Warp again and then use this ability, which is W, R, and B, and that's it. And so let's do it again. Move, W, R, and B. And look at that, it has a nice super armor and basically go penetrates everybody and goes through everybody. Just like this right here. It just goes through everyone, whoever is in front of you. And so we learned four skills, which is Sand Warp, Sin Splitter, Silent Breach, and then Paradise Search. So if you guys practice enough, this is what it would look like. So we want to do movement skill, movement skill strategies. So what we're going to do is sand warp and then another skill. Sand warp and another skill. Sand warp and another skill. So right now we're going to do basically sand warp, silent breach, sand warp, paradise surge, sand warp, sin splitter, and then sand warp, silent breach again, sand warp, paradise surge. And so let's try that. Sand warp, space bar. Sand Warp, WF, Sand Warp, WR, Sand Warp, Space Bar again, Sand Warp, and then WF. And basically, you know, do all over again. Now I want to teach you guys something and this can be a little challenging because we are actually going to use the main weapon. And so what we're going to do now is go to main weapon and then we're going to use sand slicer and then this skill Haladai assault i'm not sure how to pronounce that and then lastly piercing tornado and so what we want to do is basically we're going to use the awakening sand warp and then after that we want to press lmb first in order to pull out sand slicer and then after that it's up to you guys you guys can use piercing tornado or you know this skill wf 
and then go from there. So for example, let's try it. So movement and then LMB and then I pull out. And then after that, it either W, F or W, RMB, it's up to you guys, right? And so that's what we can do right there. And then let's say that we have, you know, our main weapon out. And so in order to go back to awakening, it's literally just moving the sand warp again. And then when we use sand warp again, now we're back to awakening. And so that's how you guys can transition really, really well from main to awakening or awakening to main, just like that, guys. And so this can be a little tricky. And so you do need to practice a lot. So let's try it again. Sand warp, LMB after, and then WF, and then WRMB, and then, you know, use the warp again. And then now we're back to awakening. And then now we can use our awakening movement skill, for example, and so on. And you guys thought I was done with the movement skill. Guess what? There is actually one more. If you guys press K and then come with skill enhancements, you guys can see basically two skills right here, which is Shadow Slicer and Sand Tornado. So let's try Sand Slicer and see what happens. And this one, you guys have to put in a hockey. So we're going to put in a hockey on number three, for example, and then go from there. And then let's see what happens when we press number three. Ta-ta! And then comes basically two dashes forwardly. And so that's really, really nice to use for PvE grinding. And he also has a super armor. And it's a really nice skill to use for your movement combos. Keep in mind, he also has a stiffness. So if you guys can actually hit on PvP, it can be also helpful on PvP. However, keep in mind that Shadow Slicer does have 16 seconds cooldown. And this one has 30 seconds cooldown. And so you guys definitely need to use this wisely on PvPs. And the reason why Sand Tornado is really cool and really good is because you guys can basically go behind people back and then actually do some kind of surprise attack. And so let's see what happens when we use it. And then boom, just like that. So we turn it into a sand and then basically uses our sand slicer. But then has another sand slicer in here that adds as a combo for us. But then again, it does have a 30 seconds cooldown, guys. And so keep that in mind, PvE, I would recommend Shadow Slicer. And maybe PvP, you guys can use something like Sand Tornado. And then it also has a stun, and so it's really, really nice to use for PvP for Sand Tornado. Dominion Slash is really nice because it also has a floating. So if you guys feel like you are lacking on floating for PvP, you guys can use something like Dominion Slash. However, it does not have any like super armor or forward guard, so it can be very risky to use. So use it on your own risk. In order to play safe, I would recommend maybe Prophecy Blade, which is looking like this. And just gives a lot of damage and super armor, but it doesn't have any floating. And so yeah, you guys can use that on PvE grinding or even PvP. If you guys also hover, it does have a critical hit rate on 50% for PvE only as well. And it also gives you guys self all DP plus 20 for 10 seconds. Mirage Assault is really, really fun because it goes basically behind enemies back. So if you press Shift Z, Boom, and then voila, you guys are basically behind them and then do a, some kind of sneak attack after that. This one has critical hit of 100% for PvE, so it can be really, really good for PvE as well. Plus, it also has a super armor, forward guard, and so very, very nice. And then if you guys don't want to use Mirage Assault, which is aggressive, you can be also defensive, which is using Owl's Mirage. If you guys use Owl's Mirage, you guys can basically teleport into people's behind. Just like that. So this can be really good and all for PvPs. But when you guys are PvE grinding, once again, Mirage Assault is where it's at. Next, let's talk about some skills that when you use it, it actually gives you guys some kind of juicy buffs. So what I just used there was Crown Kick. And if you guys do so, you guys can get up to critical hit rate 30% for 10 seconds. After that, we have a Piercing Fang, which is RMB during certain skills. So let's try SF and then press RMB after. Just like that, we use basically two skills right there, and then we're able to use Piercing Fang. Reason why Hasashin can be also be good in evasion is because when you use Sand Warp, you can get all evasion plus 9%. So whenever we're just spamming this skill, guys, we can basically get up to 9% of all evasion rate. So that is why people sometimes love going evasion build for Hasashin. Inquisition, if you do down LMB, we get basically accuracy of 9%. Clasp is a really nice skill to get your attack speed up. And so when we do down RMB, we can basically get up to 10% attack speed. Also keep in mind that we can also replace that skill with Sand Slicer. And so when we use Sand Slicer instead as well, 
we can basically get attack speed 10% through that way as well. However, Sand Slicer and Claps does not basically stick together. So for example, when I use attack speed on that, and then when I change to Awakening and then use that skill again, it just basically resets the seconds and that's it. So it doesn't basically give us 20%. It basically just renews our attack speed. Next, we're going to talk about is Serpent Coil. And when we do so, we get basically 12% of all evasion rate. Keep that in mind, Serpent Coil and also Sand Warp cannot stack because due to they have same evasion rate. And so for example, when we do Warp, we get 9%. But when we do Serpent's Coil, it basically replaces it and then just turns it into 12 seconds of 5 seconds. So this skill is really, really nice to use for PvPs when you guys are basically wanting to just press Shift RMB. And while you guys do so, you guys basically have a lot of high evasion rate. So people can't basically hit you while you are basically using that skill. Constriction is a really nice skill because it has a range grab. So when we press Shift E, it will basically have a range grab. So just like that guys, and then now they're bound. And then that's when you guys want to come close and do your combos, for example. This is a really fun skill to use, which is Hourglass of Recall. So if when we press, press F as Awakening Weapon, and then just move around, for example. And then if you press F again, we basically go back to the teleport location. However, I noticed that there is actually a distance for that. And so if I'm far like this, it won't work. And so make sure you guys are about this close, and then it won't make you guys teleport. So that can be very useful around like PVPs and so when you guys just cast this and then start fighting and then when they're around here you guys can just basically press F and then get to there as soon as possible and then get close. Guess what time it is? It's time for combos! This is a scenario if you guys actually use Shift E and then actually got a grab then this is the combo that I'm about to teach you guys and so let's get this started. So if you actually get a grab with Constriction, what we want to do next is go in Sin Splitter, go behind them, Inquisition, get the Accuracy buff, do a Slash for second knockdown, and then Crown Kick, and then Piercing Fang, and then Serpent's Coil, lots of damage, and then if they're not dead, use it in Snaring after that. But make sure they don't have a grab, because if they do have a grab, maybe they can stand back up and then just grab you after that. So just be careful, but if they're like Wusa player, for example, who doesn't have grabs, that's a good situation that you guys can do right there. What's so cool about Awakening is that if you guys scroll all the way down, you guys can pick selected skills. So if you guys want to be defensive, you guys can use Dune Slash for Super Armor, Inquisition for Forward Guard, Class for Forward Guard as well. However, if you want to play aggressive, you guys have three options, which is using Sin Splitter, Serpent's Coil, and Ensnaring Stance. And so how you guys are basically moving around and doing your movement skills, and then happen to use a Sin Splitter, then that's when they can actually get bounced. And so I'm gonna show you what that means. So let's get Sin Splitter right now. And now look at this. After we get Sin Splitter, we don't usually have knockdowns or bounds whatsoever, but when, now when we use it and actually get a knockdown, we can get a bound from it. And so that's why it's really, really nice to use that for a PvP scenario. So once again, if we don't upgrade it and then use it, they don't basically go down and go in bound. But because we activated it, and now when we use it, they basically can get down on the floor. Keep in mind though, if we do have a Sin Splitter right here, when we're doing the grab combo guys, you do not want to use Sin Splitter because it counts as a second knockdown. For example, like this, Shift E. And then if you use a Sin Splitter, it counts as a knockdown. And so basically they're immune after that. And so what we want to do is actually just get a grab and then just use Sand Warp and just go behind them instead, instead of using Sin Splitter. So this is what it would look like grab and then just sand warp behind them and then do your combos for example. After that what you guys want to use is Cyprian Coil or Ensnaring Sand as well to give them a bound or knockdown as well. So for example if we use Serpent's Coil right now, nothing really happens when we're engaging or fighting. Now actually activating the Serpent's Coil, now look at this. Shift right, now they actually get knocked down. So what do we need to do? We do the Doom Slash combo and then Crown, RMB, and then just do like shift LMB if you guys want, right? And those are the stuff in that situation that you guys can do on those scenarios. Personally, I think using Sin Splitter is just better because it has a shorter cooldown, which is six seconds versus like Serpent's Coil, you know, it takes like 13 seconds and Ensnaring Sands takes about 10 seconds. 
And so yeah, I think Sin Splitter would be a really good one if you guys actually get a bound, right? What we can do now is basically use Doom Slash after that, which is Shift F, get a socket knockdown, and then do your combos, what I just taught you there. And so now this scenario is basically without getting a grab, we're just gonna get knocked down, for example, on a Sin Splitter, and then do the same combo what we just learned together. So once again, Sin Splitter. Boom, and then if they don't have a graph, finish them with shift left click too if they're not dead as well. Just like that. So we have a few options that we can basically give them CC, which is a grab right here. And we always want to save our Dune Slash for second knockdown, guys, because it does have a knockdown at the end, and knockdown has longer CCs on the floor. After that, if we use Sin Splitter or whatever, one of these three skills, and then you guys can basically use that. But for now, I'm using Sin Splitter. And then if I get that on the enemy, if they actually fall down, then they get into the bound, right? And so what we can do now is again, use Dune Slash and they give them a second knockdown and then do your combos. Collapse does have a bound. However, it does not have a forward guard, right? And so it's kind of risky to use that. And so I don't really recommend using that in PvP unless you're actually using this one, right? So instead of using Sin Splitter, and let's say that we're using Collapse. Now we have a forward guard and a floating, right? So that's another strategy that you guys can use on those scenarios. And then for Awakening, lastly, if we can use Silent Breach, they can also can get a float. And so just like this, boom, just like that. And if you get a floating, what we do is now basically, you know, acquisition, get your accuracy up if you have time. But if you don't have time, once again, use a Doom Slash and then do your combos, what I just basically taught you from previously. If you guys also want to be fancy, you guys can use the main weapons as well, which is Sand Slicer, if you guys can actually land a hit. It gives them a stun, right? And so what you guys can do now is change it to Awakening again and then do your combos. Or if you can actually land the Piercing Tornado as well, they can also give a really nice CC just like this. And give a nice floating just like that. Don't forget the Shadow Slicer and Sand Tornado. They also have a nice CC. So if you guys actually land the CC, then you guys know what to do. Just keep in mind, you're still on your main, and so what you need to do is basically, you know, shift direction and get your Awakening out and do your combos or something after that. And so, yeah, just keep that in mind. That's about it, honestly, for Awakening. If you guys are interested in Secession, I will make a video for Secession pretty soon. And so, yeah, I will save all the skills for Secessions, and so I don't spoil, you know, everything on Awakening video. And so if you guys liked it, please give it a like and subscribe on the videos. And if you want to find out about Secession as well, definitely subscribe and so you guys won't miss it. That's it with my part one video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you do so, you guys know what to do. Thanks again. Have a nice day.